G'day humans, today I'm talking about my reading routine. Now I tend to do the bulk of my reading in bed of an evening. I've been reading before I go to sleep for as long as I can remember. So I hop into bed, I get my book, and I start reading until I start to feel tired. You know what it's like. You read the same page three times, and then you still don't know what it actually said. <laughs> Once you reach that point, you know it's time to put the book aside and turn off the light. What I would like to do some nights is to do a bit more reading earlier in the evening. To use it as my primary form of entertainment and relaxation instead of TV. But after work, my brain is usually fried like fried to a crisp. And I just don't have the mental energy to even think about reading. Like the thought of it, so if you go, oh, I can't do that, oh. So what I tend to need to do after I've done all my jobs is collapse on the couch with Netflix for a while. After that, I can usually um, have the mental capacity to read. Now, the danger is that you just be into another episode and then another, and then it gets really late and you still want to read. So you either can't read much, or you just kind of read and it gets later, and yeah, the problem compounds. But that's a bit of a challenge for me, to uh, set aside some nights to do more reading. Another time that I like to set a bit of time aside for reading sometimes is the weekend. Now this was kind of hard in our old house, because our old house was small. So my wife would often be resting or even sleeping in the bedroom, because she's a shift worker. And the kids tended to rule the lounge room on the weekends. If they wanted to watch something or if they wanted to play a PlayStation game, they'd be in there generating noise. And I can't read with that kind of noise. I need to be in a quiet environment. And that kind of left me nowhere else really to go. But in the new house here, it is a lot easier. We have a spare couch in the dining room. And I've even got this couch right here in my office, which I love. It is so great to have my own little space that I can go. I call this my Fortress of Solitude. It's so cool. But yes, I will often sit myself down to read for a little while on a weekend. And what tends to happen when I do this, unfortunately, I'll be reading and I start taking really long blinks. Then my hands kind of go limp and I drop my book. So I'll pick it back up start reading again and it happens again. I keep falling asleep. It's so frustrating. I actually get really quite angry and upset about it sometimes. Because I want to read. But when I sit down I fall asleep. What can you do? It's called getting older. I'm technically middle aged now. Actually Adam, some people now classify middle age as being well past 60. Okay. Thanks for interjecting that computer. I don't know what to say. Where was I? Oh yeah. Um, so reading is not something in this day and age that we just do with our eyes. We also read with our ears. And I love audiobooks. I'll usually have a separate audiobook on the go at the same time as I'm reading another either ebook or paper book. So I listen to audiobooks when I'm doing housework, like making the bed, or doing the washing up. <laughs> even when I'm driving the car. So it's another great way to read. Now the difficulty here is, with audiobooks, sometimes I find it hard to concentrate. You suddenly realise, oh, hang on, I have no idea what happened in this story for the last five minutes. And if you don't kind of wind back and, and re-listen to it, you just get so lost. You, you reach the point where you're like, I'm listening to this, but I don't even know who these characters are. Uh, the last couple of books I've listened to I've d done better. I don't know why. Maybe my mind has just been able to focus a bit better. But that, that's a struggle that I sometimes have with audiobooks. Well, that's pretty much how I read. Kind of sounds a little bit pathetic, to be honest. But I'm doing pretty well with my Goodreads reading challenge this year. So I must be doing something right. And don't forget that Jewel of the Stars Episode 1 is available on Amazon, Kobo, Google Play, iBooks... Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. 
and episode 2 is coming soon. I've got a date set with my copy editor, so it's happening. Now why don't you let me know in the comments what your reading routine is like, and I'll see you next time.